Welcome to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, Attention Coach Jeff Copper. We're here today with David Gwerk, founder of the ADD Coach Academy. David, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Always great to spend time with you. You know, David, one of my favorite things to do is to illustrate how the, the not-so-obvious solution can be obvious. And you have a great personal story that, um, as an individual with ADD, I'd like to, you to share with um, our, our viewers here. Okay. Because so often, I think those with ADHD think a solution has to be a certain way, and they keep doing it. It's not natural. So uh, what I'm referring to is the rocking chair yep. story. So yep. um, could you like set the scene? It's high school. You're living in New York, and you're bouncing off the walls, yep. breaking furniture. Take it from there. <laughs> well, um, it actually it did happen in high school, but it actually happened even before that, Jeff. I was uh, uh, about eight or nine years old, mm -hmm. and I was a very hyperactive kid. And the only way that I could pay attention, whether it was watching television or just sitting still, is I was... I would vigorously, I mean more than vigorously, <laughs> rock back and forth on these couches and I actually broke two couches in my parents' house and so my grandmother got smart and she bought me a rocking chair because mm -hmm. she was afraid I was going to bankrupt my parents because we had to buy uh -huh. two couches. So she bought me a rocking chair and um, that's, that, that calmed me down and it allowed me to sustain focus and as I got older, you know, it would... And so can I you? Yeah. Sustain focus, but it's also in the, in, in the context of school here because yes. we're going we're to take uh, the yeah, rocking chair yeah, here to, to, to college here in a second. So you were an okay student, but you did you did I was okay. You started doing your homework in the rocking chair? Yes. Well, what happened was, um, you know, I would use the rocking chair just to be able to pay attention to things. And then I realized, you know, it calmed me down enough so that I could read uh -huh. and I could learn. But the way I learned was not the typical way because I had to work a lot harder. So what I would do is I would uh, take notes from a, like a history class and it might mm -hmm. be on the a Gettysburg Address, yep, for example. Yep. And I take a common tune like uh, I'll be coming around the mountain when she mm -hmm. comes. So I do the Gettysburg uh -huh. Address yeah. to that tune. Uh -huh. And I did uh, literally all my history, all my classes I would learn by singing a, a tune and singing the notes from my notebook to that tune and what I found is the rocking allowed me to pay attention uh -huh. and the actual singing allowed me to hear it and I was able to learn and I, I actually excelled in school because of that but it probably took me five to six times longer than everybody else so so I got this visual you're in a rocking chair yep. singing your notes to yourself yep. as a way to sustain focus yeah I, I was singing and it was it didn't matter what song I just pick a song and I could use that song all night yep, uh, yep. I, the, just the, yep. the rhythm yep. and I'm, a, I'm very much a kinesthetic learner uh -huh. but I like rhythm and uh, and but I'm also an auditory learner uh -huh. so you know the kinesthetic was what allowed yep. me to sustain but the I had to verbalize it to myself uh -huh. so I could hear it. That's why coaching is so yep. powerful. We get to mirror yep. it back yep. to our clients. So I, I learned yep. to do that by myself. Now, this was a time we didn't know what ADHD yep. was. Yep. Yep. I was yep. a discipline yep. problem yep. in school yep. because of it. But so, so you've got this visual kind of going. So let's fast forward. All of a sudden, now we're in college, and yep. you've got roommates, and you've got the yep. rocking chair. Tell yep. us about that experience. Well, my... Uh, <laughs> Um, my freshman roommate, we actually were, were both walk-ons on the Syracuse University mm -hmm. basketball team, and we became real close. But he didn't know me too well, and uh, we had adjoining rooms, and uh, the rooms were two-thirds divided wall. There was a two-thirds. It was semi-private, but I didn't think he was in the room. And one night I was uh, studying for one of my classes, and I was rocking on my rocking chair and singing, and he observed me for like 10 minutes and didn't tell me. And then he came over and angels from Puerto Rico said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Jesus oh Christ, what are you crazy? Yeah, are you nuts? Uh -huh. You know, and he, started, yep. he never saw anything like this. And I was like, I turned beet red. And I said, angel, this is the way I learn. And I felt so bad. And then he said, well, okay, now that I understand, yep, it's no yep, problem. Yep, yep. <laughs> because he just did, he, he was so weird for uh -huh. him to see somebody do that. Yep. And uh, we became best, you know, he's yep, my best yep. friend from years, but he just didn't know what yep, it was. Yep, and it yep. was, to, and can you imagine him doing that? And then you're hiding that from the rest of the world. You think there's something wrong with you, but that was mm -hmm. the only way I could mm -hmm. do it. And when he started to accept it, um, he never mentioned it again, but I always felt weird. Yep, so yep. I always would find places, even with him, where he wasn't around. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I kept it secret until I was 38 and diagnosed, and I started sharing this started stuff. Sharing, yeah. sharing. Well, yeah. what, what, the reason I wanted to have this on the, on, on the show is, again, so many people, um, the, the obvious solution is not so obvious at the beginning. No. And if you pay attention to who you are and how you work, it'll yeah. actually give you the clues. And I think this is a great example. And uh, I actually have another thing, Jeff, and this is yeah. true, and I could probably get you a visual of it. One of the ways I meditate and calm myself down for years, I sit on a floor, a concrete floor. With basketballs? Too many basketballs, and I put music on, 
and um, I just get all these great thoughts. So I'm listening to the music, playing the balls, and I can actually stretch all simultaneously. Yep, yep. I think I've actually seen you doing that in you, me, and my ADD or something, yep, in that video yep. where you're sitting there, and he's, he's like 45 degrees, he's got the two basketballs going at the same time, and he's like, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. And again, um, that's your thinking chair, huh? That's my thinking right. chair. I'm always clear when I do it and exercise. You know, anytime I exercise, that's because what I learned was I'm such a kinesthetic yep, learner. Yep. And, 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 and like you, I'm also a verbal processor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but when you give me that platform, yep. I'm, I'm clear. Yep. Yep. So it's yep. really cool. Well, David, thanks for coming on the show and sharing thanks. your story. It's, and it's a great story. And everybody out there, do it your way, not the way you're supposed to do it. All right. Absolutely. Take care.